And one more thing I want to cover here uh, about uh, more advanced parts. Uh, this is one of the, the from the latest three, five uh, years of, of one of the concepts that has come to from how the big companies, specifically Facebook and the likes, have really taken this to another level. Uh, this goes more in the in the advanced part of, of future versions of the products and how to think these uh, habit forming products. Basically, it's based on this uh, cycle of first there's a trigger, there's an action and some kind of reward, and then the user is willing to spend more time and invest more time with the product to do the next thing. So this is more kind of building it into the uh, onboarding the new customers experience and into the funnel of how to get customers. Basically, it means that uh, ask them to something very, very little, give them something of value immediately back. And the bigger, you, the, the less you can ask and more value you can deliver in the beginning, the more easy it is it's to get uh, the customer to, uh, to start spending more time. But the key trick here is that this variable reward it basically means that, that uh, you don't always have to give a reward. First time, yes. Second time, yes. Third time, maybe no. Or what they get as a reward may be variable. And, and the, the analogy here is like a, a, a gambling, like a slot machine. That you get the result, but you didn't win money every time. And that's why they are so addictive. When that's, so this is habit-forming products that you always get the result, but the, the reward that you get with the result varies. And this is, this is specifically for, for, for onboarding and also building products where you really can get, create also problems for, for people uh, as, as well. But it's good to understand this from trying to avoid bad products or designing this for, for example, a, a, a medical product that helps you stay healthy and creating a habit forming product. So the, the basic cycle goes like this, that there's a feature. So what is the external trigger gets user to the product? So somehow there's, you know, uh, a link or an email or a notification or friend recommendation or whatever, something that drives new customer. And what is the internal trigger the product is addressing? Like what does the user want? Oh, I, 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 I'm bored. I want to get, you know, uh, I, I have some extra time. I want to activate myself or I'm looking for an answer to my question or whatever. And incentive, what is the simplest behavior? Like press a button, uh, uh, slide something, and, 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 and then the, the user is expecting something, something in return. So then the reward, is it fulfilling, yet leaves the user wanting more. So they get a little bit, but they wonder, oh, oh, there's also probably more there. Is there another one? Is there another one? What's the next card? What's behind the second page, the third page, the fourth page? A slide presentation, what's on the next slide? And so forth. And then what bit of work? What is the next request from the user to actually get that next level of reward and balancing this and making this work is, 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 is basically uh, how these habit forming products are, are, are created and you can think of how email works in this cycle you can think how instagram works on this cycle you can definitely see how facebook works on this you can see how youtube works on this you can see how netflix works on this so you can imagine why why those products are so 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 successful, and when they also use this type of approach in designing the product. So samples, Pinterest scroll, just keep scrolling and scrolling. It's like a Facebook feed, similar. They may be an interesting photo. They may not be. Google search. So already when you start typing, you are already taking into this model. You don't no, no longer even need to type the whole request and press search. It's the predictive. You start to see interesting. How do I? And then there's 
already like, oh, and you may even search something that you were not intending to search. So there's immediate reward when you press one keystroke. The play button in YouTube, we can capture our interest for a few minutes. So all of these are very simple and get something immediately back. I think the Google predictive search is one of the, the, like the, the least that you have to do. And then these are more of a human nature. It's like the strongest triggers are when we are feeling bored, lonely, confused, fearful, lost, or indecisive. So we are just basically in, a, in that kind of emotion where we're trying to, you know, kind of get some kind of grounding or security. These are the, the, the if, if delivering something for those, those are usually very effective. 